Liberals love to feel morally superior. Oh, we'll extend rights to the guy who tried to blow up the plane. It makes them feel so good that they're above. You know, the more base responses of guys like me. Well, we believe in giving him rights because we have a system. We're civilized. Mark Belling just wants to waterboard him and get information out of him. Okay, you liberals, you're better people than me. But guess what? I'm smarter than you. You're a bunch of dopes. I get the guy. I start waterboarding, and I find out everybody that thing's going on in Yemen. Prevent everything else. Find out where the Al-Qaeda guys are in Yemen and go out there and shoot them. That's what I do. Okay, you liberals, you may think that you're better than me because you wouldn't do that. I just saved a lot of lives, however. What have you done? Other than make your own damn selves feel good. And that's what it's all about. Feeling good yourself. You're so good. If I owned a business, I'd never lay anyone off. Yeah, yeah, you go broke. Now you're running. I, if I ran a country, I would never want about a terrorist. All right, fine. Now you're going to have more terrorism. To be an American liberal is to engage in permanent ideological self-gratification. I was going to use the M word, but I don't need to. Permanent ideological self-gratification. The constant telling yourself you're better than everybody else because you're above certain things. I want to save the planet, so I don't support SUVs. I'm a humanitarian, so I don't support putting a terrorist at Guantanamo. This is all about making yourself feel good. You're bleeping off to make yourself get your own little jollies. That's what it is. You're not better than me. You're dumber than me. What you are is somebody that constantly has a need to feel as though you're morally superior. Okay, feel you're morally superior. I'm intellectually superior. And guess what? I got you on the moral side too. Because your moral superiority is going to get a lot of people killed. Neville Chamberlain is your God. The guy who walked away from Hitler, oh, well, we can deal with Hitler. He's a nice guy. He's your God. You worship him. Millions of people died because of the attitude of appeasement toward Neville Chamberlain. But boy, the people who were soft on the Nazis prior to World War II, both in Europe and here, boy, they felt good about themselves. Feeling morally superior doesn't mean you are morally superior. Just as bleeping off doesn't mean you had sex with a woman. That's too crude. Oh, but it's making my point. You're appealing to the basest instincts of Americans. No, I'm appealing to their common sense. Without repeating the entire first hour of the show, it was one thing for liberals like Michael Kinsley to have their above-the-fray attitude when they didn't have any power because the American people weren't dumb enough to put them in charge of anything. Now... The buddy of former terrorist William Ayers of the Weather Underground is the president of the United States. Now these people and their thinking are in charge. They are in power. Two people, two leaders, two approaches. Approach number one. A guy with roots in the Al-Qaeda operation in Yemen gets on a plane and tries to blow it up. Approach number one is to arrest him, take him to jail, give him a lawyer, lay out all the evidence against him, including including secrets that we might have, expose them at trial. That's approach number one. Why, it's the American way. We've been fair. We've extended rights. Approach number two, grab the guy, get him in a room, 
deny him food for 18 hours, start waterboarding, and find out exactly everything that you know. That'd be my approach. Approach number one is considered to be the American way, the moral way. Which approach saves more lives? I'd argue the one that saves more lives is the one that in the end is the morally superior one. The Bible, God says he's got a hell. Imagine sending somebody to hell for eternity. That sounds like a pretty miserable thing to do, right? Just because something seems terrible doesn't mean it's bad. The word sacrifice was invented for a reason. Unfortunately, we have a president and administration that are not willing to sacrifice their obsession with feeling good about themselves in order to save their own country. These are people that don't even like to talk about the situation that we're in. Try to find a liberal who, is, a liberal who even defends the escalation of the war in Afghanistan. Find a liberal who has an opinion about whether, about whether we should be attacking al-Qaeda in Yemen. They don't want to talk about these things. They just want to keep prattle, prattling out about Bush. It's an issue they don't want to deal with. It's something they don't want to dirty their hands with. Because right now... Their moral relativism is a conflict with competently running things. So they're going to run away and they're going to hide and they're not going to talk about it. Unfortunately, the guy that we chose to elect as president of the United States, he's got to run the country and he's got to make these decisions. And as I said, I'm not saying that everybody who is soft and has weaknesses like this is a liberal. There are some on my side on the right that are like it as well. Pat Buchanan has shown signs of being a softy when it comes to Muslim terrorism. Ron Paul's a lunatic. We've got some of those on our own side. I acknowledge that. I'm telling you that the prevailing way of the, 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 the prevailing liberal view on this is the one that I'm describing. And it's the liberals that are right now running the country. And it's the liberal illogic that I'm attacking and dealing with here. Some of you think if you have a headache that you just be nice to the headache and hope it goes away. Me, I'll take an aspirin.